The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Pierce County Fire District number 16 on your new apparatus, job number 30375. Please utilize this job number when referencing your new apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Here are a few images of the side and rear and passenger side of the vehicle just for reference. Let's go ahead and get started with the front bumper of your apparatus. First starting in the center section here you'll find two tow hooks. Moving up from that location up onto the body you'll find a headlight cluster and turn indicator. On the outer edge you'll find a warning light on the right and left side. Let's take a look at the opposite side on the bumper. You'll find mounted flush, siren, and PA system. Moving up from that location in the center of the grill you'll find two forward facing emergency lights. And on the driver's side you'll find your air inlet. Moving up to the center you'll find the pull location to tilt your hood. Let's take a look at the side here. You'll find on each right and left you'll find marker turn indicators and you'll also find the latch mechanism here for releasing the hood on the right and left side. Door handle with a keyed lock. Moving up from that location on the right and left side, you'll also find these grab handles for entering and exiting the cab. And then let's look at the mirrors. You have a top section which is going to be flat and a lower section which is convexed. Moving down to the base, you'll find perimeter lighting located at the very base of the step. And moving up from that location, you'll find step lighting. The large aluminum tank here at the very base is going to be a silver cap. That's going to be your diesel fill location. Moving to the uh, rear of that location in the black tank, you'll find a blue cap, which is your DEF fill location. Taking a look at the uh, midsection here, let's start at the very top of the apparatus where the arrow is indicating. First, let's start. You have a number one crosslay in yellow. Moving to the right, you'll find your number two crosslay. And then over to the very far right, you'll find a dead load crosslay. Got some images here, kind of close-ups. Once again, all of the uh, labels have clear text on them and also are color-coded for ease. Yellow indicating number one. You can see here in black the dead lay. Let's go ahead and move down onto the pump panel itself, starting first at the upper left-hand corner, starting with the pump discharge. This is your master pump discharge gauge. Moving down from that location, you'll find your master pump intake gauge. Let's go ahead and move all the way up to the very top. You'll find a set of switches. First switch is going to be your panel light. The other switches are basically placeholders for future locations of switches. You'll also find your tank water level located in the blue section. Just beneath that, you'll find your vacuum and pressure. These are test ports. And moving to the right, you'll find your pump boss. This is for pressure and volume control and also for throttle control. Just beneath that, you'll find an audible alarm and then you'll find a green indicator that says OK to pump when your pump is properly engaged. Moving down you'll find your number one cross lay in yellow. Moving to the right you'll find your number one driver side discharge that is in red. As we move further down you'll find the number two cross lay in the white color. And then I'd also like to point out this warning label here regarding pressure hazards and to be cautious when releasing or opening caps if they are under pressure and the hazards associated with that. You'll also find the number two passenger side discharge in orange and on the right hand side you'll find your tank fill and recirculating lines. Moving down in the green section this is going to be your large diameter passenger side discharge in green once again. You'll also find the tank to pump just underneath the tank fill. As we move down just further from that, you're going to find some instructions here in the white label regarding priming and that you should have at least 1,000 RPMs while priming. And then you'll also have your fire pump primer. 
just down from that location you'll find your engine cooler this is a twist not a pull and then just beneath that you'll find the number one uh, driver side discharge in this red color and this is a two and a half inch discharge to the right cap area here you'll find a large diameter intake let's go ahead and take a look at the lower section this is your auxiliary this is a two and a half inch auxiliary inlet just beneath that you'll find information here regarding your hail pump and also an air inlet moving just on the opposite side you'll find your auto charger when plugged into shore power this will activate your pump drain this is the shoreline inlet in the red here this is a 20 amp auto eject plug let's look underneath all of this area and you'll find the number one driver side discharge and the auxiliary side auxiliary inlet these are two drain locations side of the apparatus we're going to find emergency warning lights in the lower section and also in the upper section let's talk a little bit about some of the compartments within this apparatus first starting in the very front compartment next to the pump inside this compartment you'll find a electrical panel here this offers your charging system while plugged into shore power um, that is the plug that's located in this compartment you'll also find perimeter lighting LED inside and also a track system for adjustable shelving let's take a look once again back at that component for your auto charger you can see the auto charger is plugged into shore power therefore operating when plugged into shore power the upper section here has a fixed shelf and the lower section has a pullout shelf to access that pullout shelf there is a mechanism here on this latch allowing that shelf to pull outward by pushing down on that latch this is its fully open position to return it push that black latch allowing it to return the very back compartment is an open compartment here with no shelving currently in it and there's also perimeter lighting let's take a look at the rear of the apparatus you can see the right and left rear clusters offering emergency lights turn indicator backup and reverse lights and also brake you have a ladder to gain access to the top also some warning information here on the very back panel near the ladder area and at the very top you have two rear facing scene lights let's go ahead and take down the lower section you can't see the one on the other side but this is an additional tow hook there's also one on the right side moving upward this is a plug for the tank as we move uh, just slightly to the right located in the center the large gray this is going to be your rear discharge main dump and then to the right this is going to be a valve here for filling uh, your tank direct fill tank to the right you're going to find your mechanism here or latching mechanism to release the side tank the red handle here is once again a safety mechanism the black handle is your main release for allowing water to flow to the right you're also going to find that direct fill for the tank this is a two and a half inch with a ball valve let's take a look at your rear dump in the center here you'll find a release pin this allows that to swivel for your dump and then on the right hand side this black latch you'll find which you can pull outward to extend that uh, drain system on the left hand side you'll find tail lights indicating for turn brake reverse and emergency lighting the very top section here once again we'll find that ladder to gain access to in the very top of the apparatus we'll talk about those uh, sections here next at the very top of the apparatus you can see an adjustable hose bed uh, and also your water tank fill location here in black this is your top side mount and then just to the right hand side you'll see all of the perimeter yellow lighting that is for your safety for walking in the top sections this is showing the top fill location for your water tank moving forward there is also once again on the right hand side you can see those adjustable uh, shelving and also a rear facing light let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the apparatus there are two locations here to release this mechanism to allow your uh, porta tank to extend downward there is a front and a rear mechanism allowing this to uh, fold in the downward position once those are released uh, you can easily access the pull down location of your portable tank let's take a look at the side of the apparatus I would like to draw your attention to this warning label regarding extremely hot diesel exhaust exhaust temperatures and as you can see your exhaust is located right in the area where the arrow is pointing here's those compartment doors in the open position you can see the rear compartment 
open area with lighting in the front compartment, adjustable shelving, and also perimeter, or I should say interior lighting. Let's take a look at the midsection here just before we get to the cab. Same configuration at the top location here with your dead load, number one and number two crosslays. But let's take a look at the panel itself. We have an access door here also with a light just above that. Once we gain access into that panel here, this will gain access to the pump behind the panel itself. As we move down further, you'll find once again a two and a half inch discharge. I'm sorry, this is a four inch discharge. This is your large diameter. And also located here is the two and a half inch discharge in orange. In the center is your large diameter intake with the chrome cap. And at the very base of this location are all the associated drains uh, for this side of the apparatus. Underneath in the same area, you'll find perimeter lighting. Let's go ahead and now move to the driver's side operator's door. You'll find this on the seat. This is the Pierce logo here regarding the manufactured by. You'll find the gross vehicle weight rating, date of manufacture, job number, tire information, VIN number, and also fluid capacities. We're now at the dash area. We're going to find the height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating. You'll also find speed control and cruise control and then headlight control. Standard dash, standard dash components. And then as we look just to the right hand side center console area, uh, we'll take a look at some of those components. But first let's go uh, overhead to the master, emergency master, lower zone, rear zone, two future locations for switches, and also the selector switch here for the siren or horn. As you can see in the center, there is a LED light indicating whether they're on. Let's look overhead once again. You'll find rear sign, a variety of different future locations for future switches. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dash now. First, starting in the upper left-hand corner, this is going to be your filter minder for your air filter. Moving just to the right of that, you'll find your traction control. And then just beneath that, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. Let's go ahead and move down to the center section here. You'll find a pump engaged in green. These are indicators. You'll find the OK to pump and the OK to pump and roll. Located in the center, yellow is your parking brake, pull to apply, push to release. As we move to the right hand side, you'll find the PTO for your pump. It is a protected switch. And then also you'll find a digital readout on the far right hand side here, information. In the upper corner in red, this is a warning indicator for not to move your apparatus. You could have a compartment door ajar. And then you also have some additional OK to pump and also your battery uh, indicator. Located in the center, you'll find this Pierce Information Center. This is a illuminating red that the seat belts are not on and someone's in the seat. And then you have green that someone is in the seat and belted. You also find your set of switches here for mirror heat, transmission, and also your region. And at the lower section, you'll find your climate control. Once again, region, mirror heat, and then transmission information. There are also some future uh, locations here if you choose to add additional switches. Generalized view here of the side of the apparatus. Congratulations on your new apparatus. Pierce County Fire District number 16, Washington, job number 30375. If you have any questions as to this orientation of this video, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.